Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Financial Futures. Today, we're diving into a huge topic social security offices have closed indefinitely. Is it a temporary glitch or something bigger? Social security field offices are closed across the country due to technical issues, and we're not sure when they'll reopen. This could mean massive delays for millions of people. But is there more going on behind the scenes? Could hackers be involved? Before we get into the details, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and subscribe. It helps the channel grow, and I promise to keep you updated on everything you need to know. So, here's what we know. On Friday, Social Security started experiencing major technical issues. As a result, they shut down many of their field offices. If you've been planning to visit your local office for any help, that's off the table for now. And if you're trying to log into your My Social Security account, some people are facing issues there too. But the phone lines are still open if you've got the patience to wait. Yup, just imagine sitting on hold for hours, maybe even days. Okay, maybe not days, but you get the idea. So, why is this happening? Some speculate there could be a hacker attack targeting the social security system. Now, I'm not saying that's the case, but there are rumors floating around. Either way, the SSA is doing everything they can to protect your personal info. And speaking of security, this comes at a time when social security is switching all logins to use login.gov a more secure way to access your account. If you created your My Social Security account before September 18, 2021, make sure to update it. Your personal info is too important to ignore this. This week will be the ultimate test. Will Social Security offices reopen, or will they remain closed for longer? We don't know yet, but I'll keep you updated. If these technical issues continue, we could see serious delays in processing claims, which could affect millions of beneficiaries. So, if you've tried visiting an office or logging into your account, know that this is a nationwide problem. Hopefully, it's resolved soon, but I'll be watching this closely. And just to clarify, no social security is not closing forever. There's been a lot of fake headlines out there, so don't believe everything you read. With all the changes coming, including announcements from the Federal Reserve, updates on SNAP benefits, and Social Security's big yearly updates in October, there's a lot to keep track of. Let's jump into our next topic. Some experts are predicting a massive 30% crash in the housing market. I know, that sounds huge, but I want to share with you why they're saying this, why I think they may be onto something, and what this means for you. Let's break it all down. So, where is this 30% crash prediction coming from? Well, a few leading strategists are pointing to a combination of factors that could send the housing market into a correction, possibly even a crash. Now, I'm not totally convinced about the 30% figure, but the logic behind their argument is pretty solid. Let's go through it step by step. First off, let's be clear, we're not in a 2008-style crash situation. Back then, the subprime mortgage crisis caused a massive flood of foreclosures as people who really couldn't afford their homes were approved for mortgages. When the market collapsed, many were left high and dry. Here's the deal about 80% of current mortgages are locked in at rates below 5%, with some even lower than 3%. So why would anyone sell, right? The problem is interest rates have climbed to around 7% on new mortgages. Homeowners who sell now will have to face much higher rates on their next purchase, which is making people hold on to their homes for dear life. At the same time, the cost of living is rising across the board whether it's food, energy, or insurance premiums. In fact, insurance premiums and property taxes have surged along with rising home valuations. And guess what? These rising costs are pushing homeowners into financial strain and some may eventually be forced to sell. Now, the strategists suggest that this rising cost of living will lead to more forced home sales. Unfortunately, a large number of homeowners may find themselves unable to keep up with expenses despite low mortgage rates. 
If people are forced to sell in large numbers and buyers are staying away due to high mortgage rates we could see a flood of properties hitting the market, which drives prices down. A potential consequence? Some of these homes might end up in foreclosure if they don't sell fast enough. And once foreclosures start adding up, that's when we could see the market really correct, maybe even close to that 30% drop in certain markets. So, do I think a 30% crash is coming? Maybe not across the board, but in select markets, I can see a 10-20% correction happening. Especially in areas where housing prices have skyrocketed over the last few years and affordability is way out of balance. If the Federal Reserve doesn't lower interest rates soon, fewer buyers will enter the market, which only compounds the problem. As for 2024, experts are saying this year could bring more pain to the commercial real estate market, and we're already seeing cracks there. But for the residential side, the worst could come in the next two to three years as affordability pressures grow. Now, this doesn't mean a housing market crash is inevitable, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you're looking to buy or sell a home soon, be aware of these trends. If the market does take a dive, there could be great opportunities for buyers but for sellers, it might mean holding off for a while. Only time will tell how deep this correction goes, but staying informed is key. Let me know in the comments do you agree with these predictions? Do you think we'll see a major correction or just a minor pullback? I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more insights like this. Also, check out my other videos for more tips and updates on personal finance and real estate. And there are more videos popping up right now on your screen. Thanks for watching Financial Futures, and I'll see you in the next one.